Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. Now in the past, I've done quite a few videos on the benefits of vitamin D, referencing scientific studies talking about its potential for reducing and fending off the effects of COVID-19 to reducing aggressive prostate cancer scores. Although some people have asked, is it safe to take vitamin D without also supplementing with vitamin K2? So I've done some uh, research, enough waffling for me. Let's jump into the presentation and see what I found out about vitamin D and not taking vitamin K2. Getting adequate amounts of vitamin D and vitamin K is essential for your health. But some sources claim that supplementing with vitamin D is harmful if you are low in vitamin K. So what's the truth? Let's look at the science behind those claims. There are links in the description below to the articles and scientific studies I used to make this presentation. One of the main functions of vitamin D is to maintain adequate calcium levels in our blood. There are two ways in which vitamin D can achieve this. Firstly, by improving calcium absorption. Vitamin D enhances the absorption of calcium from the food that we eat. Also, by taking calcium from our bones. When we don't consume enough calcium, vitamin D maintains its blood levels by drawing on the body's main calcium supply, and that's our bones. During periods of insufficient calcium intake, your body has no other choice but to use the calcium reserves in our bones, even though that may cause bone loss, and over time, this could turn into osteoporosis. As we know, vitamin D ensures that blood levels of calcium are high enough to meet the body's daily demands. However, vitamin D does not fully control where the calcium actually ends up in our body. That's one of the roles of vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 regulates calcium in our body in at least two ways. Firstly, it promotes calcification of bone. Vitamin K2 activates osteocalcin, a protein that promotes the accumulation of calcium in our bones and in our teeth. It also reduces the calcification of soft tissue. Vitamin K2 activates matrix GLA protein. This prevents calcium from accumulating in our soft tissues, such as in our kidneys and in our blood vessels. Blood vessel calcification is implicated in the development of many chronic diseases. Some of these include heart disease and kidney disease. Is vitamin D harmful without also taking vitamin K2? Some people are concerned that a high vitamin D intake may promote blood vessel calcification or BBC and heart disease amongst those who are low in vitamin K. Some lines of evidence partly support this idea. Firstly, vitamin D toxicity causes hypercalcemia. One symptom of extremely high vitamin D levels is hypercalcemia, a condition characterized by excessively high levels of calcium in the blood. As we know, vitamin K2 keeps calcium in our bones and out of our soft tissues, and this includes our blood. Secondly, hypercalcemia leads to blood vessel calcification, or BVC. In hypercalcemia, calcium and phosphorus levels become so high that calcium phosphate starts to accumulate in the lining of our blood vessels. Again, we know that vitamin K2 keeps calcium in our bones and out of our soft tissue, which includes our blood. And lastly, blood vessel calcification is associated with heart disease. According to experts, blood vessel calcification is one of the main underlying causes of heart disease. Vitamin K2 keeps calcium out of our blood vessels and in our teeth and in our bones. Let's now look at this from the vitamin K side. Vitamin K deficiency is associated with blood vessel calcification or BVC. Observational studies have linked low vitamin K levels to an increased risk of blood vessel calcification. Also, vitamin K supplements may reduce blood vessel calcification in humans. One controlled study in older people showed that supplementing with 500 micrograms of vitamin K every day for three years reduced BVC by 6%.
Vitamin D toxicity is a concern as extremely high doses of vitamin D can lead to dangerously high calcium levels and blood vessel calcification, another reason to get a blood test. Vitamin D toxicity may cause blood vessel calcification while vitamin K2 may help prevent this from happening. So you should get a blood test to see what your levels are and only if you are deficient or insufficient should you start to supplement. Now, as with all research, there are conflicting views and conflicting opinions, but I believe on balance, it's advisable to take vitamin D3 and vitamin K2, but again, only if you are deficient or insufficient. But I think it's important to get a blood test first to see what you need to supplement with, even if it's only to save money. So you don't buy a supplement that your body really does not need. For those who are interested, this is what I take. It's 60 capsules sold by do not age.org. Each capsule contains 5,000 international units of vitamin D3, 120 micrograms of vitamin K2, and that's the MK7 version of it, and 250 milligrams of magnesium. This usually retails for $18. If you use the my NMN discount code 10% off, you can then get that for $16.20. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Um, although it may not be harmful in the short term to take vitamin D without vitamin K2, I err on the side of caution and I now make sure that I take a vitamin D3 K2 supplement in my stack. Uh, I'd be interested to know in the comments below, if you take vitamin D3 and not vitamin K2, having now watched the video, are you considering including vitamin K2 with your D3 in your daily supplement stack. I'd be interested to see what you've got to say about um, vitamin K2 with regard to vitamin D3. Well, that's it for today. I hope you found this um, presentation interesting. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care and bye for now.